Welcome back to the channel. My name's Tom. It's May 2023 and I'm back at the Brimfield Flea Market in Brimfield, Massachusetts. For the May 2023 show, I filmed over 10 hours of footage, so this will be part one of many parts. I'm not sure how many yet, but at least eight to ten. So stay tuned and I hope you enjoy the video. Now let's see what we can find. This is 39 or 64? I think it's 39. No, it's the 64. Is it? Nope, I was incorrect. It's the 1939 New York's World Fair, and I should have known that because of the Trilon and Perisphere on the cover. Maybe it's not. I don't know. Because it was referencing 1960. I think I think that's the 39 with that thing. The 64 was something different. This alarm clock caught my eye. This is a West Clocks Big Ben. I would guess it's probably from the 1940s. I looked it up online and they seem to sell for approximately $40 to $50, but the price is varied wildly, so it's hard to say exactly what that would be worth. Oh, it's like a yearbook for the Army. Oh. Or Air Force. Army Air Force. Hmm. I'm not a military guy, but I've never seen anything like that before. Is there basically the equivalent of a yearbook for the military? If anybody knows, let me know in the comments. It's a Kodak stereo viewer. It looks like a um, Viewmaster, but it's different. Oh, that's different. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't think I've seen one like this before. I don't see any discs to put in there. Though. No, I think they're probably just like rectangular. Yeah. They're not actual discs, but. <laughs> I looked it up online, and the Coda Slide viewer would actually view stereo slides that you took with a stereo camera. You would take the picture, get it developed, and instead of just getting back a single 35 millimeter slide in 2D, you would get a stereo version of it, and you would view it on that viewer. Unlike with a Viewmaster, where you would generally get a circular disc that had pre-made images on it. And that viewer there seems to sell for about $25 or so on eBay, give or take. Get some Golden Girls for your wall. Oh. <laughs> And don't forget, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, leave a comment, and hit that notification bell. I have a lot more flea market videos coming up. Thanks.
Here's a Nintendo Switch. I don't know how much it was. He didn't have a price on it. It looked a little beat up. There were scratches all over it, so it was probably yeah. well used. Uh, but I think that's probably the first time I've ever seen a Switch for sale at a flea market that I've been to. Here's a nice Philco radio from probably the 1940s. And I think the best part about it, in my opinion, is the red lettering on the dial. It just really pops. It's a nice contrast and color scheme. Let me know if you guys need any prices. What y'all look at? The prices are all on them. Here's a bunch of old pie plates. These always remind me of Frisbees, because I think, I may be wrong here, but I think the Frisbee was actually based upon a pie plate, or that's what inspired the Frisbee. When they actually, when we actually made stuff. Yeah. What's on the back? There you go. I always give people change. Oh, really? It's fun. No, it's fun. Who doesn't want change? Don't you feel like you've done something good today, don't you? You know, easy peasy. This is all supposed to be fun, even on my end. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. 1968 World's Fair in San Antonio, Texas. Huh. I don't think I've heard of that one. No, I haven't either, but I well, already four years. I'll get this. I have to tell you. Yeah, it's like when you walk in the main strip, you're straight to your left. There's an old card game from 1952 called Space Race. And apparently it was a two-player game with the object of being the first player to make your way around the solar system. Sounds kind of fun. Uh, according to eBay, they sell for about eight to twenty-five dollars per pack. Here's some nice old alarm clocks. These, I don't know what they are. I didn't see a name on them. I would guess they're probably from the 30s or 40s, roughly. Uh, if anybody knows what these are and if they're desirable, let me know in the comments. Here's some Coleco Pocketfuls. And I'm sure if you grew up in the 70s or 80s, you remember these or at least something very similar to these. I've never seen them for sale, though, in their original packaging like this, at least since the 80s. So I went online to see what they go for, and I wasn't able to find any active or sold listings for these in their original packaging. So I'm not really sure what they're worth. They seem to sell for approximately like six to ten a piece loose. So I would guess in their original packaging they're probably worth twenty to thirty dollars roughly. That would be my guess. Ten 
This is a 1995 Playmates Interspace Star Trek Enterprise D playset. You can see it's missing the nacelles at the back, so it's probably not worth that much. I think even sealed in the original box, they only go for about 30 bucks, so it's not that valuable. But if you need it for parts, I'd probably pay, I don't know, $5 for it maybe. I'll be honest, I hate these types of puzzles. I remember trying to do these as a kid, and I'm sure I was never able to solve one of them. These are probably right up there with Rubik's Cubes as far as difficulty goes. If any of you have been able to solve one of these before, let me know. And also let me know, is there a trick to this? Because if there is, I never figured it out. I thought this John Deere mouse was kind of neat. It's not an antique, it's from 2011, but you can see it's got that liquid and the little tractor and the dirt in the mouse itself. It's kind of cool. This is kind of cool. Smurfs acrylic paint by number set. I think I had this back in the early 80s. Fairly certain I remember working on something very similar to that. If not that exact same thing. Pretty much just like a negative essentially, you know? Like you just gotta find something that could like press it onto the glass. You know, I I don't know how that works. I don't know the process. But that would be dope because then you could do like modern ones and stuff too. Buy an old, the old machine. There's a bunch of old 8-track tapes. And I would say 90% of the time when I see 8-tracks, they're either country music or other music that I just have no interest in whatsoever. So I went through these just to see if there were any that I might be interested in. And I did see a couple here. We got the Eagles Hotel California. That's a classic of classic rock for sure. Got Cheap Trick. Dream Police. Definitely remember hearing that. And what else we have here? Got some Queen, Kansas, Sticks. And then up top here, they have some others. Um, this is weird. Chevy Chase. I don't remember Chevy Chase ever doing music. That must have been a one off thing that he wanted everybody to forget because I have no recollection of that whatsoever. Now, Led Zeppelin 2, I have a very good recollection of. That's probably one of my favorite classic rock albums. Led Zeppelin, In Through the Outdoor. Not bad. Alice Cooper. Don't recognize any of the songs on that one. And another Alice Cooper album. Not a huge fan of Alice Cooper, but I do like the songs I'm 18, School's Out, and some of his later stuff like Poison were pretty good back in the 80s. Here's some random bars of soap. I don't even think these are that old. The packaging to me doesn't look any older than maybe the 90s at the most. That's kind of unusual.
Yeah. Right? I'm trying to figure out. Like, I want to try and get him like in front of a window or something. So he see, can well, see my all. original plan here was to get a, a light box. Yeah. You know, but I didn't know I could pay for power. Yeah. So next, next time. Or even like get an old window, just like the channel window, just, like a different, and then you can just like, you can, like pack them up there without like. I mean, permanently you, adhering them, like, but like you know, just having like. Maybe some like clay putty on the to four yeah, corners. Yeah, a little bit. And just like. Cool. Then, like, Here's something I haven't seen in a long time. Brown VHS cases. And I don't know if it was just a local thing for me, but back in the day, brown VHS cases meant something specific. I'm not going to say what it was, but some of you out there might know what I'm talking about. Here's something you don't see every day. Hmm. Yeah. This is the Mork and Mindy card game from 1979, and what makes this one a little bit unusual is it appears to be factory sealed. That does not look like a reseal to me. I wasn't able to find any that it sold in sealed condition like that. But the unsealed ones have sold for up to about twenty dollars, so I would guess that's probably worth mm -hmm. at least thirty or forty. Here's what appears to be an antique gumball machine. It even says five cents on it, but the container is made of plastic. So I'm not an expert, but I would think that means it's not an antique. I would imagine that container should be made of glass. This is definitely an antique, though. This is a Selecto Vend. It's an antique vending machine from the 1940s. And it looks like this one would have had candy bars in it. It only sells for about $115 to $220 on eBay, which seems very low to me. I would think they would go for a lot more than that. And this is really cool. This is a Cordo scope. It's a early 1900s flip card viewer. Basically, you'd put your coin in, and then you could watch a little movie through that view scope there. That's pretty awesome. They seem to go for quite a bit of money, though. A few thousand, at least. Yeah, it's a, it's the dual one. Regina. Oh, it's Regina that plays with this records also. Okay. This is a Thanos piggy bank, and this actually is not an antique at all. This was made within the last few years, and even brand new, they only sell for about $25, so nothing too special there. Are there any cash register experts out there that can tell me what this is? It clearly looks like a cash register, but it's missing any keys or buttons that I would expect to see on it. It just has that weird lever uh, in the center there. I've never seen anything like that. Here's what appears to be the fiberglass shell of an old go-kart or maybe a push car or a pedal car. Not entirely sure. It looks like it's probably from the 50s, but it's very far gone. I don't even know if that is repairable. Yeah. Or if it's worth repairing at this point. I would say no, but I'm not an expert. One thing that they have a ton of at Brimfield is antique bicycles. This one here is by J.C. Higgins. I'm guessing it's from the 50s. I've actually never heard of J.C. Higgins before, so I'm not sure how popular they were. But I love the styling. It looks a lot like the uh, Pee Wee Herman bike from Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Very similar.
mystery action battery operated squeaking bunny. It's mystery action. With lighted eyes. So you get a bunny with glowing red eyes. Oh. How would you be Yeah, and they are red eyes. This is fun now. Everybody needs a demon bunny. Yeah. yeah. Say so. We got it to actually light up. Oh, really? Yes, it terrified all of us. Yeah. <laughs> I can and imagine. Is that the mystery action? It says it's mystery action. It, like, it cranks. Um, it lit up for like half a second. Uh -huh. And. Hmm. Oh, but it all mostly functions. <laughs> wow. We put it took like a million batteries. And uh oh, neat. I like the outside box. Mostly. Yeah, yeah, that's it's what, the best part. Yeah. Yeah, and then you open it and you're like <laughs> <laughs> They have this marked as Toys R Us Giraffe. I'm assuming they're referring to the Toys R Us mascot, Jeffrey the Giraffe, but I don't think that's what that is. I could be wrong, but I looked it up and I didn't see any reference to that being Jeffrey. And honestly, it looks a little bit too old to me. Where? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. It's magnet lead, magnetized, yeah. right? Lead Maybe close it up with a mask. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Assuming these are just art for art's sake, because I can't think of any other possible explanation for these. Very unusual. These are old wax cylinder recordings from the early 1900s, and I think it's ironic that they're called gold molded, because if you look these up, they have a major problem with getting moldy. I have a pretty extensive collection of old character glasses. This one I do not believe is old though. This looks a lot like the Roadrunner on the 1973 Pepsi glasses, the design of him, but that looks much newer to me. And I did not see an actual date on it. Yeah.
I'm not sure. I'm guessing it's some sort of radio. Oh, Sensitivity no, beam. Oh, yeah, what goes in there? Cardi oh, cardioscope? Some sort of heart monitor? I don't know. Oh, and it's got a little printout here, so maybe yeah, it was, was like a... This thing was. Yeah, like an EKG out. type thing? I don't know. That's strange. Just the price. Oh, early cardiologist machine. Whatever oh. that means. Huh. Hmm. Yeah, never seen one of those. I thought this was pretty cool. This is a nightlight, believe it or not. I would guess it's from the 50s, just based on the appearance. And they're asking 250 for it, which it might be worth that. I've never seen one like it before, and it's pretty awesome. I would love to have that, but 250 is just a little bit outside of my price range. If you've watched a lot of my flea market videos, you probably know I'm into older and antique telephones. These are a little bit out of my price range, though. That one is $350. Honestly, don't know if it's worth that much or not. I've never seen one exactly like that before. And this one just appears to be a chrome version of a standard touchtone phone, probably from the 80s. They were asking $75 for it, which is on the high side for that type of phone. But then again, it's chrome, and I've never seen a chrome one before. Here's a bunch of old postcards from the 1933 Chicago World's Fair. Eleven of them are unused, three of them have writing on them, and they were only asking $10 for the group, which I thought was a pretty good deal. I thought the notes on some of these cards were interesting. This one, for example, says, Would you send me my army shoes and army shirt as soon as you can? They are something I can't read the rest of it. But it's really interesting to read that type of stuff, I think. This one's not quite as interesting. It just says, Received your letter the other day, and thank you, I would write and let you know I would be in Tulsa October 20th. Something like that. Hi. You have uh, $10 on these? Yeah. World's Fair? Yeah, I'll take them. Here's a bunch of carnival chalk figures, probably from the 30s or 40s. And these would have been given out at carnivals usually as prizes, things like that. These ones though are in pretty rough condition. The prices were fairly reasonable though, that one was $15. I think if these were in mint condition they would be worth quite a bit, but as they are they're you know, fairly affordable I guess you'd say. I just want to sell it. He moved, then decided to move to Santa Fe. 
I honestly love it when they price tables like this where they have, you know, everything's five dollars or everything's a dollar, etc. It really takes out the guesswork, obviously, and the need to ask somebody how much something is. And this kind of interested me. This is an old Star Trek snow globe, probably from the early 90s, most likely. So not that old. It's missing all the water, though, and I'm guessing the water leaked out because I opened up the battery compartment and it's all full of rust so it's very likely this no longer works and there you have it that's the end of part one of the may 2023 brimfield flea market i hope you liked the video if you did please give me a thumbs up subscribe to my channel leave a comment and hit that notification bell I do have a lot more flea market videos coming up, as well as mall videos and a whole bunch of other types of videos. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.